data set from the 2004 Sumatra earthquake and tsunami to take a look at the capabilities of My World GIS. This is version 5. You'll notice when you open the data set, the map view displays on the right and the layer list on the left. Above that is a toolbar, add data, tools associated with the analyze tool, which we'll look at in a minute, an information tool, a link tool, move the map, zoom in, zoom out, measurement tools, zoom to layer, and below the map, the scale and map projection, which can be changed depending on the data set. To turn a layer on, you simply click to turn the eye on in the box. We've now turned on World Cities. It's also activated, as you can tell by the highlighting. If we look to look at the data in that layer, we simply click on the data table and it shows us the data in the layer. The data can be sorted, increasing, decreasing, or back to random. We'll turn that box off for right now. For this example, we would like to look at the earthquake that occurred in 2004 in Sumatra. I've already plotted two of the three seismic stations that we're going to look at, but I'd like to show you how to plot the third one so that we can determine the epicenter. For this, we'll use our Analyze tool. We simply click on the tool to open it up. You'll notice tools that are available here, selecting by value, comparing values, spatial relationships, combining data sets, mathematical operations, creating charts like scatter charts, or profiles, or in this case, making a buffer. For this example, we're going to make one more buffer. It's going to be around a station called PALK, which is at a distance of about 1,820 kilometers from the earthquake epicenter. We know that from the seismic record. So we're going to go ahead and add that buffer in, and you'll see that a circle opens up with a radius equal to the distance from the seismic station to the epicenter of the earthquake. Now we'd like to make that a clear circle, so we're going to go ahead and click on the layer, and we're going to indicate that we would like to have an open circle. Now you'll notice the three circles of radius equal to distance from the seismic station intersect at one point. That should be the earthquake epicenter. Now that epicenter is pretty well known, so we'll just turn it on here on our data layer and see if it agrees. There's the blue star indicating the earthquake epicenter, and we did a pretty good job with our data. Let's move on. One of the most powerful tools that's available with My World is the ability to link out to other websites for information. So for this example, we're going to turn on the layer of warning centers. We're going to activate that. You'll notice when we do that that these flags pop up at three different locations where there are warning centers in the Pacific that look for tsunami activity. We're going to click at the base of this flagpole in the northwestern U.S. and click on the link, which opens up a window. Now you'll notice that we've gone out live onto the web to a place called the Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting of Tsunamis, or DART. We can look at the information here and we'll find that we're able to get some real-time data. Once we click that, it opens a window, which is going to open a map for us. And in the map, we're able to hover our cursor over various tsunami warning stations. So these are buoys located in the Pacific Ocean that show us information about possible tsunami activity and you'll notice that those dates are live. We'll close those windows again. We'll go ahead and turn off the links, and we'll turn on the Global Seismic Network so you can see how many seismic stations are available on this project file. They're listed in the legend on the right-hand side of the map. I hope you'll get more information about my world and explore its possibilities for supporting your students in your curriculum.